Welcome to Ravens Over. Please subscribe to my channel. Or you have a story you want me to cover, email me at ravenover at yahoo.com. There's an Instagram button. If you follow me, I'll follow you back. Please subscribe to my channel. And here is the story right now. Please subscribe. Hey! What's up? What's up? What's up? How you doing? Ooh, how you been? What's going on? What's good? How you getting it in? Everybody getting a fuzz? What's going on, people? Okay, here's the update and references Stephen Clark, 22 years old, the unarmed black man. Update on Stephen Clark, 22 years old, police fired 20 times at South Sacramento man fatally shot while holding a cell phone. Like I said before, Google his name, Stephen Clark of Sacramento, California. Now I want to tell you this story about him. This is a long read. Okay. Stephen Clark was holding only his cell phone when he was fatally shot on Sunday night by two Sacramento police officers who fired at him 20 times, the department said Tuesday. Department officials on Tuesday offer more details about what happened in the moments of before Clark, 22 years old, encountered officers in the back of South Sacramento home where he was staying with his grandparents. Now, Clark family members, meanwhile, flooded um, his grandparents' spacious two-story stucco and brick house on Tuesday demanding answers on what led up to the fatal shooting. His grandmother, Sequina Thompson, pointed from the living room window to the spot where Clark was found. A uh, feet away in the dining room, the walls were covered with framed photos and family members, including Clark. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time in his own backyard, his backyard. Thompson said Tuesday, come on now. They didn't have to do that. The police arrived at 7, 7500 block of 29th Street at about 9.18 p.m. Sunday, responded to a 911 call that a man was breaking into vehicles, according to the Department of Sacramento County Sheriff Department. Helicopters have responded to deputies and the helicopter reported seeing a man armed with a toolbar in the nearby backyard and began direct ground officers um, <clears throat> to the location. <clears throat> the airborne deputy said that they saw a man use the toolbar to break windows, which police later said was the near um, sliding glass doors occupied home on 7500 block on 29th Street. Now, police Tuesday said that there's some of the blocks and a piece of a liminal siding similar to what would be used in the rain gutters were recovered from a near a broken door and take it to the evidence through either items were definitely identified as the two bar seems to be disputed in the helicopter the residents the resident at the home of bill wong 88 years old tuesday told the b that he was unaware of the events as was unfolded on Sunday, he didn't hear or how the window was broken or hear any gunshots. He said, the sliding doors have been patched up by Tuesday morning. I came out. The police is already, he said, out of the night. They didn't tell me. They don't, they don't tell me anything. Police said that after seeing Clark broke Wong's window, the helicopter was disputed observed him running south where he jumped a fence into his grandparents yard adapted to Juan's house um, he headed towards the front of the property along with the way looking into another car police said on Tuesday where there was a black SUV in a gold Cadillac pack in Clark's driveway Clark had been staying with his grandparents in the house on and off for more than a month, his family said he had been released from county jail about a month earlier and said the brothers, the brother, um, Savannah Clark. A search of Sacramento Supreme Court records found four relative cases of Stephen Alonzo Clark. The most recent were two felony counts of domestic abuse, 
to which Clark, who preferred to go by the name of Stephen, pleaded guilty and agreed to complete a treatment program. The court records also show that 2008 robbery charges and charges in 2013 of possession of firearm and possession of a controlled substance. Now, Clark's family said that if the front doorbell was broken and the family members would knock on the back door for entrance through the um, garage door. Now, police entered the front yard of Clark's grandparents' house and saw him alone on the side of the house, according to the original document press. Police said that the officers gave the um, suspect command to stop and show his hands, but he immediately fled from the officers and ran towards the back of the house. It was there the police said that they pursued a Clark and where he turned and um, advanced toward the officers while holding the object, which extended in front of him. Police said the officers believed that the object was a gun and fired, fearing for their safety. No gun was found at the scene. Police later said that the object was a the object was a cell phone that was found near Clark's body and taken into evidence. Thompson, Clark's grandmother, said that the object was an iPhone. She said that she also found um, with a pair of headphones. Clark's girlfriend, Selena Manny, said the, that the phone Clark held belonged to her. She said it was on an iPhone 6 Plus in a rose gold color case with a black holder in the back case items like credit card. Um, department spokesperson Sergeant Vance Chandler said that each of the two officers involved in the shooting fired 10 shots uh, for a total of 20 shots fired. Chandler said that he did not know how many times Clark was hit. Clark was pronounced dead at the scene by the fire department pronouncers. The two officers involved in the shooting have two, have two and four years in the Sacramento Police Department and said, um, and each had an additional four years experience as of other agencies. Now Chandler said on on-scene investigation had been concluded by Tuesday by the overall investigation would take longer. Typically reviews of such officers involved police students to um, takes months before final reports and issue the incident will be investigated by homicide investigation will be reviewed by the city office and public safety safety of accountability which will release in public records as its finding videos of the incident will also be released in um, compliance of the city policy in the act of 2016 after the officers involved shooting of joseph mann in north sacramento that the shooting prompted a service of police reforms including requiring all, all patrol officers to wear body cameras and receive um increased training and the escalating techniques. Now, Mayor Darrell Steinberg on Tuesday said the police chief Daniel Han, Han would ex expedite the release of the videos captured on the body cam, the body worn cameras and dashboard um, cameras. In recent incidents, the department also released evidence auto as well. Chandler said it would also include footage showed that um, sheriff's deputies from the helicopters, if it would be one of the first time that Sheriff Scott Jones has agreed to release a video or call the sheriff department to confirm would it release the video would not immediately return. Now, advocates in the African American community has voiced concern over the shooting and how the department will respond to it. This is a moment of truth as says a community advocate as far as Barry. Now Barry said there's many community members are looking for the department to handle the incident with a greater degree of transparency um, than some feel past police shootings have received. Now Han, um, who took over the department the, the following the man shootings was expressed in the um, commitment to trans Parency and has several occasions released police footage using though the department was not required to do so. Han also spoken to office, I mean, 
Han also spoken often community groups about the desire to build trust between the departments and the community of the colors through more collaborative policies and greater um, transparencies. Um, Barry said, um, some community members questions of the shootings was assessors force want to know what led up to the young man being killed. He led the court. He said that the um, clerk shooting is being viewed and defined moments of by many on how far the transparency accurability will go. There is a moment I think a lot of us have been expecting said Barry, this is a full definition where transparency, accuracy, and justice are really going to be put in front display with the new regimen of policies. I think a lot of us in the community have been told there was, was a whole lot of the other way on how the police of Sacramento did police the community, especially black and brown people. And this will be the test for Clark's family, the concern are more personal. They're trying to raise money to buy to Barry Clark next to his brother, who was also killed by gun violence Tuesday. A GoFundMe campaign has been raised more than 4,000 toward that goal. Clark's leave behind two sons, three and one year old. And they're asking that, the, that they're asking, where's daddy? Where's daddy? Said Manny, the mother of Clark's children, who, I mean, he was a part of our family. He was our rock. So, that's being reported as far as this man being murdered. You know, and this is like the um, update on this. First of all, he was in the back. He was knocking on the door in the back. Now they said the helicopters said they followed him and they're saying that they saw him jump over the fence. I find it to be questionable because why wouldn't the helicopters release that video of him jumping over the fence? It would make a lot more sense, but I haven't seen that footage. So if someone's hearing that, you need to look into that. The guys who, um, the cop officers seemed to be very shaky and nervous, my opinion, when it came down to looking for him. It was nighttime. It was dark. The whole thing was very scary within myself for watching the video, which I will release in the bottom of this, um, which I'm going to release in the, um, comment section. I'm not going to, um, put too much feed. I'm just going to put the release so y'all can see the whole videos for itself and you get an idea what actually happened. Once they shot him and they killed him, they were still asking him to get up. The man was not moving. They continued to wait. Now, if there was a possibility that the man was still alive, they waited so long enough until he was dead. I find it to be questionable as well. Also, I find it to be questionable why the ambulance was not there and why was the fire department there that came to pick, pick him up? Why was the ambulance there? They called the fire department. So the fire department came near. And all this time that everybody's waiting, the man is leaving his body. If there was a possibility that he could have been saved, they waited long enough that he wouldn't be saved. I find it very interesting that when the shots were fired, the body cam seems to lose auto. That means that they were talking, but you couldn't hear anything. I find it to be amazing. To me, I always feel as though things become suspect when all of a sudden something comes, cuts off and then everybody's still talking and then it cuts back on, which you will notice in the ending part of the video. You will notice them standing around talking and you will notice that the volume is now turned off. You see a lot of disappointing faces as though it's almost as if they're trying to get their story together, that they got the discovery that there was no gun, that there was a cell phone. They collaborated their stories. 
and that's what happened. Me, myself, it was very dark. They could have hollow freeze come out, but they didn't. They started shot shooting. They said his arms was length. Maybe his arms was up in the air. We will never know that. They said his arms was out. So, was it upward out or is it your way out as far as the gun? Because if the man's hands was up in the air and you shot him because it was so dark, because you couldn't see what you were doing. You, he was a black man in black. He had on black clothes. A black man with black clothes on. White t-shirt. He was knocking on the back window trying to get into his parents' house because he cannot go on the front way. Because his parents can't hear the front they can live in this big house. So he ran around the back. He was knocking on the door. And from what I understand, if I may be wrong, he actually screamed out to his grandfather, let him know he was back there. And all of a sudden he heard they didn't really hear. All of a sudden he heard the cops. And they see, you know, him standing right there by the window with his parents started shooting. Now, this is only my problem I have. They said that he was standing up there with the, um, you know, with the um, cell phone and stuff in front of them. The problem I have is this. If somebody's coming at you and they're shooting, maybe... Okay, I would shoot back, maybe. But they walked all the way around the back of the house. They see him standing there. And he's not far from the window by the grandmother's window, which you'll see. He's knocking on the window trying to get in, let them know he's there. Because that's the only way he can get in. Because they can't hear him in the front. Cops standing back there to see his arm up and see him knocking on the window. Start shooting. Falls to the ground. See the cell phone. And then after that, they're telling him, can you hear me? Can you hear me? 20 shots. He's on the ground. He's not moving. Lifeless body. And they're still asking him, is he alive? Anyway, I think it's a very bad situation. And the family in my prayers is very bad on so many parts. Because first of all, it was very dark. That's even worse. Because that's like shooting in the dark and waiting to the light to come. Even when a helicopter is flashed the light, you still can really see that well. And it just shoot in the back and not really knowing what's going on. It's even more worse, worse to me. Because it could have been packed with a bunch of kids back there with them. The grandmother said that's where the grandbabies played at in the back. It was around 9 in the, in the evening. And they just started shooting. And I feel as though if it was that deep, they should have knocked on the front door, banging on the front door, and had to cut the light on in the back. But they didn't do that. They just went on ahead and they killed them. Anyway, I love your feedback on this. I'm going to put the video on the, in the bottom, and I'm going to let you decide. You tell me what you think of it. Like I said, this, and, 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 and you tell me how you feel about this. Um, it's, it's unfortunate. Like I said before, subscribe to my channel, and I'll be waiting to see your comments and your feedback. And I'll let you. I love you, and thank you for watching. Kiss the rain.